ruination has come. The broken arches betray the once grand history of this building. It towered over the harbor until it happened. A great force from the northeast fired into the city. Heavy artillery shelled the coastline, fired from the water, a straight shot into Revachol. The tenement acted as a defensive wall against the worst of the shelling until it was destroyed and they had a direct firing line. The waves of the Martinez Inlet rolled over the fallen remains of the building. The dark waters obscured the better part of the remains. What didn't fall into the ocean was used as scrap. What wasn't used as scrap was thrown into the ocean. Those arches acted as support for something greater than what you see now. Only three stories stand where nine to twelve once did. Restoration has failed. What the shilling took out was never rebuilt. A fleet, the combined armies of Occident and Grad, with Mesk volunteers, a five-nation army, hundreds of vessels. They massed airships further down in the Bay of Revachol. The artillery was so powerful. The ships not only required gyroscopic stabilization, they were anchored into the ocean floor as well. Many are still there to this day. If you squint, you can just barely see the shadow on the water, far in the northeast. Cannons still ready to placate Revachol. Piggies have learned how to saunter up staircases. I didn't think you could do that with hooves. But here you are. Yeah, you got me now. The dynamic between us has completely changed. That smell coming from her paint bucket. It's not paint. It's heavy fuel oil. What did you think I was using? Aquarelles? This shit is pumped out of government vehicles. She did it herself. Pumped it out. She's proud of it too. You ain't seen nothing yet, piggy boo.
Gain officers, have you come to admire my mural? Ooh, not only have you found my address, you've discovered my biggest secret. I'm a coal miner. She does have eyes that seem to be smeared with coal. Yes, I keep hoping a shaft will collapse on me, but somehow it never happens. Does anyone in a city like this? If there's pain about any particular home she's lost, she's buried it deep, fortified herself against it. It doesn't have to do anything at all. Nothing does. Like me. Right now, I'm doing nothing at all. The inspiration will come to her once hell is set loose on the streets. It's too calm right now. Shoot, piggy. It's what you do, isn't it? This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk drawn number on the board says number 11. No reply. No reply. It's a solid lump of metal, but the shackle is deeply corroded. A solid pair of chain cutters would make short work of it. Better whip out those cutters. You won't get very far otherwise. Give me a moment. Ask away, policeman. People come and go. I don't keep an eye on everyone. They probably just moved or died. Hopefully somewhere else. The artiste? Nothing I can do about her, I'm afraid. She ruins the walls faster than I can clean them. Still, she leaves an old lady to her business. More than I can say for others. The hell am I supposed to know? Another nut job, I assume. Oh, that one is a scientist, a future scholar. I think he studies astrology at the community college. Education's good. I always tell them to study. Something to do with all those stars around his door. He asked me to leave his drawings up on the wall. 
That's what I said. Astrology. She mumbles some kind of a response, then hacks something into her handkerchief. This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk drawn number on the board says number 11. The shackle snaps like a twig and the lock falls to the floor with a little thud. It should be possible to enter now. The cast bust depicts a middle-aged man with impressive sideburns. The name on the plinth reads Kras Marzov. A poor communard from the looks of it. The room is barely bigger than a closet. A warm feeling fills you as you look into Marzov's marble eyes. The hallway behind the door is empty. No one else heard your courageous salute. That isn't just a five-pointed star. It's an inverted white pentagram cradled in a wreath of antlers. The iconography of communism, in other words. The star and antlers was developed in the sixth decade of the last century and quickly adopted by Mezov and the communards during the revolution. Even today, half a century after, the star and antlers retains the ability to evoke hope, disappointment and fear in equal measure. To symbolize the toppling of the old order, also, some social democrats were already using it. The wreath of antlers represents a natural crown. It was about building a society that could exist in accord with the natural world, and at the same time, above it. Because white is the color of peace. Gone, gone is the glory of hope. Only the scribblings of impoverished students remain in dirty hallways.
This door is made of metal and appears to be reinforced. Someone here really values their security. Number 28. This is where the cleaning lady said the smoker on the balcony lives. No one answers. It looks like he isn't home. You should come back tomorrow evening, after 2100. Just an ordinary wall. Nothing to see here.
Um, is this about the questions again? Because I don't really know anything. A colourful display of cigarettes and alcohol bottles line the shop wall, inviting you closer. Again, I'm obliged to inform you that both alcohol and cigarettes damage your health. Um, the Pale Age Vodka is special, I guess. It's stored in Pale for a couple of years, which makes it super expensive and super strong. You know. I mean, I already said it'd hurt you. I don't know what else they do. Substances give powerful bonuses to your main stats at the cost of damage to your health or morale. Cigarettes raise your intellect while damaging your health. Alcohol raises physique while damaging your morale. Use medication like nosafed and magnesium to counteract the negative effects of substances. Note, consuming substances can have unforeseen consequences for you. No, Frit only sells legal drugs, like the law says. Huh? Speed. Like. Speed. Speed. No, Frit doesn't do that. Here you go, mister. To the left of the croissants and juice bottles, several packaged raincoats fill a low shelf. One is missing. No one need be any wiser. A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles, nasal sprays, and blister packs. They all bear the Saint Baptiste Pharmaceutics logo. The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says, one bottle equals 10 cents. The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says, one bottle equals 10 cents. Your bottles clunk into the machine and the money appears with a satisfying jingle. You're a richer man now. You're 100% sure you got special hobo cop money for that tear. At least 100% extra tear money. If the numbers on the machine told you otherwise, it's a lie.
The pockets of these new jeans are perfect for sticking your hand into. Makes you look cool, calm and collected. As your hand enters the pocket, your fingers brush against something. Soft, yet crinkly. Hey, it's a chewing gum wrapper. It reminds you of the fruity juice of apricots. You should inspect it closer if you have time. Something about the wrapper's texture is familiar. Not familiar in a good way, you might say. There's pain in there somewhere. By the way, the raw materials were most likely exported from Seagai, the apricot suzerainty, and processed in Sir Le Clay into the apricot-flavored chewing gum loved by kids of today and yesterday. Mm. Something about it is familiar, and not only to your fingers. There it is again, the scent of apricots with a touch of cinnamon. Smells like the end of some distant summer, the surface of another planet, or some ancient temple. Yes, from the height of antiquity, a long, long time ago, millennia ago, on an island of time you can never return to. The sun sets into the sea, but the water does not boil. Instead, it turns to liquid gold. For a moment, the world's store of precious metals seems to increase dramatically, and you are rich. There is a movement next to you, the shuffle of a small coat, warm like the evening. But when you turn toward it, there's nothing there. Why are you talking to a gum wrapper? Bitter, citrus, sweet. It seems to grow stronger like a glow with every breath you take. Whatever petrochemical byproducts they used to create this artificial flavor have bonded tightly to the wrapper. Or is that just your memory filling the gaps? Until a blossom of skin and flower petals erupts behind your closed eyes, made of toffee, cream, and distance. You just had to take a dive. So, so familiar. 